I just needed to know where the thing was. You have was. to do the intro. Oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Good Studio, your central place for premier eSport content here on Twitch TV. I'm James Harding. Joining me is none other than Andy. Hello. I'm doing good. I didn't ask Everybody, you how you were doing. Welcome. Uh, I guess that was rude of me. Studio, I apologize. Your central you place. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, e apparently, um, hopefully we're back. I'm, I'm just James actually Harding. just going to wait for Twitch chat. Joining no, me. we're good. I can it's see. Yeah, we're good. Um, and Andy. And hopefully they can hear us Hello. fine. Uh, so basically, I'm doing good. Um, some yeah, bastard yeah, sold us a broken video. microphone. Um, don't say um, echo. Yeah, so, uh, is there if there's if chat if there's an echo? Do you think there's an echo? No, well, that microphone's not plugged in. So unless they're echoing through my microphone. Yeah, I basically doubt that's possible. I don't know. Because I think those microphones are sensitive enough in their standbys, and they couldn't even hear it far away from me. Is there? If, chat, okay. if there's an echo, um, I'm just mm, maybe. Do you think there's an maybe echo? not. No, well, there's a loop like from. A, oh, wait, Bruno's talking. Yeah, oh, someone banned him. I don't know. Because I think those microphones are sensitive enough. Thank you, moderators. Wait, let me see what Bruno said. Yeah. And they couldn't even hear it. James, don't cut your fucking hair this year. Mute the stream. Wait. Maybe. Maybe not. I wonder if they're from. Oh, wait, Bruno's talking. There's a loop from the stream. You're not running the stream, right? No, I only have Dodo. Okay. And, uh, Let me see what Bruno says. Yeah. FPL thing. Maybe it's like Scriff. James, don't cut your fucking hair. It probably is Scriff. It's, it's probably yeah. Scriff. Fucking Scriff. Scriff, have you got the stream on or some shit? <laughs> oh my god, it's actually... It's actually Scriff? I was going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I love Scriff, but holy shit, are you serious? Scriff. Can we have a camera on your face, please? We want to see the man responsible for not muting the stream for the last fucking hour. Yeah, you s No, that's fucking Rhineforce. Scriff? Where are you? Scriff? That- It's not fucking me, you prick. He's on the fucking camera. Alright. Um... Is it fixed, at least? God, I hope so. Is it actually fixed, chat? If it's fixed, I'd be very happy. <clears throat> oh, we're not too far behind, delay-wise. All right, it, it feels like we're fixed. All right, so yeah, welcome to the fucking good studio. Like, the world number one place for premiere fucking content on Twitch TV. No one does professionalism better than we do. And it's just a testament of... Uh, you know, our, sh our studio is a testament and, you know, the fact that we're pretty much on time uh, to cast yeah. today's um, uh, show, which, what, what the fuck's the show, Look, Andy? James, uh, starting times are guidelines. Okay? They, suggestions. So, yeah, exactly. You're not supposed yeah. to actually yeah. start on time because that's what people would be expecting. Yeah. Give them something different. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you think you can only get with a girl after the third date or on the third date, guideline. Guideline, yeah. Oh, I like that. It's a good idea. Mm. So, for those of you who don't know, the reason why we're actually down here today is we're going to be casting some FPL matches, which stands for the Face It Pro League. Yeah, we are. Uh, the new Face It Pro League. And we're doing it from our new brand new studio. Mm. Uh, as many times as I can say new, that's how new this studio is. And it's uh, this is actually a green screen, guys. So, yep. don't worry. We're actually trolling you. Um, but we've really done some uh, impressive stuff to uh, really up the production, because that's, you know, that's what the good studio is. We are the most professional broadcast. Um, so for the next 10 minutes, just because he's been annoying, uh, Johnny's gonna come out here and put up our uh, backdrop so everyone does actually know it is the Face It Pro League. Um, yeah. A lot of people just use wall mounts or green screens. We use real bitches. And they're six foot five tall, uh, we don't pay them because it's just it's just how we roll so this is going to be johnny uh he's going to be here for the face it pro league as you can clearly see we're going to be commentating please johnny stand center we've rehearsed this a hundred times and uh, i'm going to get rid of the microphone <laughs> yeah it looks better without the mic yeah, there we go um you know you're actually a pretty good height that's like yeah that's, that's pretty like, that's, no, that's like too high. That's um too high. so yeah this is the face it pro league we're going to be casting that in the moment um a lot of people have uh, also been expecting us to do some new stuff with our overlay system and 
I tell you guys, you know, once again, you know, we've already nailed it. 10 out of 10. We went further on. First thing you need in an overlay system, what do you need? Well, you need nameplates. Well, actually, no, you don't. You need a clock because people need to see what time it is. A lot of people use. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. I forgot that thing was even sitting there. A lot of it's actually the lower third. And now you can clearly see eight o'clock sharp on the clock. Um, so we're perfectly in time. I mean, it looks like a kaleidoscope to me. I can't I, see from here. I think I can. Turn it. I, I don't think it can be head on, can it? Our new, over, our new overlay system is struggling. We're running into some bugs. Hold on, we're troubleshooting right now. How are we gonna do this, by the way? It's on. We need to prop it up. Yeah, it can't be. You have to stay there forever. It can't be front on. There we go. There we go. All oh. right, brilliant. All right, Amazing. there we go. So, uh, as you can see, eight o'clock, uh, three-dimensional overlays. Um, the other thing you need is you're right, Andy. You need nameplates, and um, <laughs> and I tell you, Andy. How are we gonna get nameplates? Well, that's the thing. Our new overlay system is pretty fucking legit. Um, I'm just saying that you think, <laughs> well, I have a question because I actually know how this is supposed to work, but I don't know, like, <laughs> <laughs> we've got nameplates for days, motherfuckers, but nobody's controlling mine because it's, where's like, your nameplate, Andy? It's linked to Johnny's phone and Johnny's holding the screen. Uh, so, wait, let me let me simulate it here. <laughs> no, but the thing is, these are our new nameplates ah, for go. our lower now thirds. It's standing on its own. Um, pretty fucking cool, I think you agree. Um, I'm too good, as you know, and now you you definitely know. Why is mine turning? And this is Andy's. <laughs> you can't even see my name anymore. <laughs> and I and I and I can drive mine. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Check out my moves, Andy. My nameplate's drunk. Oh, shit. I think he's dead. Oh, no, I'm stuck. All right, I'm blaming this one on Scriff. Oh, there we go. Now he's yeah. good. So... Don't let them fall over. <laughs> Whoa! Easy there. Sorry, I don't... This I don't isn't know a what game of Joust. I don't know what got into him. <laughs> <laughs> it's my show, bitch. Mine's uh, just standing there. No one's even... Set it, you can set it on dance mode by twisting the wheel. What? And I can do a little spin. Look, check me out. Look at that, Andy. My Michael Jackson. Well played. Woo. I don't even have a phone. Huh? <laughs> what you wheel? Turn the lift it up. Yeah, turn the wheel. And twist the twist the wheel. It. What color? Um, orange. No. Tur 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 turquoise. Oh, yeah, Purple. Right, yeah. Which one? Which one? Ah, oh, here we go. Turquoise. I want to dance. How do I? That's fucking production value right there. If it falls off the desk, I'm not paying for it, by the way. <laughs> I want to dance. How do I make it dance? No, you just turn the left These wheel. These overlays are so complicated. No, no, no. Just turn the left wheel. All right. I'm out. Of... Oh, yeah. I got it. Which one? Turquoise. Which Turquoise. Okay. Yeah. No! You probably what? don't want to dance. Other way. <laughs> other way. You, yours died. Yours died, Andy. Yeah, well, you know what? He died doing what he loved, loved, James. Too good, you're drunk. <laughs> what are you doing? You got this special robot school. <laughs> hey, he's up. No! <laughs> Can you go in game soon? <laughs> <laughs> How do you open my system? It sucks. <laughs> Alright, how much, how much laughing is too much laughing? Because I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> are we okay? Are we yeah, good? Let's just go into the game. Mm, oh, fuck okay. this shit. It's, what are we uh, doing? We're casting Dota. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're actually in a game, but I think it's... Mini too good just it's, died. It's meant to be kind of over-ish soon. And uh, <laughs> for the people who probably forgot because of our sick overlay system, this is, this is actually the FPL right now. Uh, we were meant to get into a game when it was first starting. But uh, we weren't able to do that, considering we're, we're only around like an hour and 45 minutes behind schedule. So we get to actually watch a game that's, that's already in progress. And it looks like we, we've also finally managed to get some game sound, which is fantastic. That's, uh, that's some production value as well here in the, the year 2015.
Uh, James has just salvaged our robots. <laughs> All right, I'm back. <clears throat> yes. That's all right, I had to save Mini too good. He was, uh, he was on a roll. Um, yeah, but basically, um, me and Andy are going to be casting some Face It Pro League matches today. Uh, Face It Pro League, Andy, for people that don't know, is they just kind of peruse as they watch this Dota game. What is the Face It Pro League? So it's a site, basically, that is run from Face It. You might be familiar with them if you ever played CSGO, for example. They're probably, I think, the biggest uh, third-party poster of servers and like mini tournaments and such for other types of games but they started to branch off into dota 2 and they have uh probably the only league i would say that has a decent incentive for actually playing in it yeah. right there's a there's a ten thousand euro prize pool yep. for this league and i'm actually not sure how the prize pool is split because they didn't tell us no but it's but basically yeah it's all the pros so it's going to be hard yeah. to get hold of some prize money um, but it means that the pros get to play some really high caliber games and yep. we get to watch it and we're going to be watching more tonight. All right. Don't worry. We're going to stick through. Um, also, I don't know why I spent so much money on studio equipment, but we seem to be streaming Dota in 720p, um, even though Andy on his personal stream could stream it in 1080p. It's just a choice, Andy. I like to think of it as vintage. Um, yep. And of course, uh, we'll try and get that resolved for the future shows as well as some other high level production stuff um but yeah so uh we'll probably just finish out this game and uh see how it goes as uh the unpause comes in we've already got a rex down middle and then uh, and basically when we get into the next game we'll probably turn into some more serious commentators we just decided to go into game because we didn't know what else to do with the robots that's um, actually pretty accurate it was it was just this moment of despair really yeah we don't want the players waiting on us because they would have waited a yeah, long I, I time i just didn't want to cry on camera yeah it happens to the best of us i mean it, there's a lot of corners in this room so if you ever feel the need there's a there's a lot of places you can hide to but uh for the other the other thing too that uh, i forgot to mention about the face of pro league is there is actually a way other than being vouched to become qualified to play in the pro league for people who might be like a, an up-and-comer player like mid 5k 6k player who want to get noticed and that's simply by playing through the face at league and then at the end of each open league they have a uh, fpl mini league is what they have yep. named it and you basically play inside of that the top three players in that league get a tryout in the fpl and yep. you will not have to be able to or you won't be, have to be vouched by a pro, basically, if yeah. you play in through that one. I mean, you'll probably, I mean, you'll probably be in there for a good month, which is a season. Yep. Uh, since the season lasts each month. But anyway, let's let's see, let's go into the game. Let's see what we got. We got a pie cat um, on the sniper. Uh, yep. He's got some items, and then I think Dendi's on the other team as well. Yeah, there's a, a lot of notable players in this game. I think this is actually the the most stacked game that we've seen so far. And in a way, it's pretty fortunate that we didn't cast the other two games because both of them were 18 minute stomps. But yeah, you so, can see, like, we got Resolution here on Spectre. We got Dendi on Zeus. Uh, Bignum is playing on the Vengeful Spirit. Uh, we got Lil on Enigma. And then Weeha is playing Night Stalker. All right. So uh, you got PyCat with the Aegis on Sniper. Time to go. You've already got one Rax, and there's no tower bottom. I mean, how, how much... How hard is it to fight against this? Because even though Dendi's got the Refresher, he doesn't have an Axe, but he's got a Veil of Discord. You've got a black hole with a, on the Enigma with a Blink and Shadow Blade. You know, Vengeful Spirit's just there to save somebody. And Resolution has his Heart, Manta, Mask of Madness, interesting, and a, a Radiance. So in terms of fighting into this, if you're dire, what, what are you thinking, Andy? Where, where are you? Uh, I mean, you've got Syndrome on your team, so you're kind of gambling. But, you know, <laughs> really, what are you doing? I mean, if, I, if I'm on Dire, I'm looking to Siege. I'm not looking to take direct en engagements against that okay. kind of composition right now. I mean, you have Sniper, you have Viper. All your heroes are ranged, basically, except for Bulldog. But you can just do what they're doing now, just set them on the racks. But here comes the flank from the Radiant side. They want to try to catch out somebody. Here comes the Reality, or the Haunt, excuse me. Lil going in for a Black Hole. He gets it off, actually, on pretty much everyone. First person die is going to be the Dazzle. Sniper drops. Aegis is going to be popped here. Bulldog getting quite low as well. Resolution still completely untouched this entire yeah. fight. Dendi with the Refresher ulti. Pycat now pops a BKB. Trying to go on Dendi. He can't kill Resolution. Pops. He might as well just hit the racks. I mean, he he's going into the base. actually hit the racks. Is he going to go try and TP? Get TP? Nah, this isn't going to work. There's no way. He dies here, I think. There's a dagger up here on resolution as well. He's not actually got... He bought a TP. It's in his stash, but it wasn't... Uh, it didn't... He bought a Shadow Blade as well. Yeah. I don't know if he was going for, like, the next level and then realizing I... that Weeha has a gem and Agonims, but Dendi here, getting cut out in the woods, going to force Steph away from the Viper. He might actually live here. Oh, no, he's going to die to Corrosive. No, he has enough health regen to live through. That was pretty close. 
They popped the Veil. Weeha's still en route here. Uh, that's fucking bad, by the way. Yeah. For anybody who doesn't know on the Viper. He's actually doing amazing in the face of Pro League as well. Like, he... I think he's currently ranked he's, to 1. Yeah, he's top 3 yeah, at least. You can I, actually check sure. it out as well on just pro.faceit.com. Uh, so... That it's uh, it's impressive to see some of the more strategical minded players kind of climb because yeah. when you stick them in the team they offer a little bit of direction they most likely do a lot of the drafting and uh yeah fucking mad's been doing pretty amazing so a dire fight has been defended i would yeah, say yeah they, they don't really have a they don't have a good way of stopping black hole that's a really big problem so mm -hmm. essentially cinder needs to always be sitting out well, you, you actually have an MKB on your sniper. Yeah, but I mean, it's... That's it. You could play around that, surely. Yeah, I guess, but it's still difficult because that guy, that Enigma, also has uh, Shadow Blade and Blink. So you need to have sentries down all the time. And if they find, like, one good opening like that, I think it was a three-man black hole that Lil got last time, and that was more than enough to win the fight. Now, granted, if they don't get that, the base damage that you can deal on the Dire side is pretty significant. Like, you can lose racks in seconds against a lone druid with these kind of items on the bear. Like, he's got AC, Basher. He's got that Radiance as well. One of the things I'll say about the Radiant team is... Oh, they want to you... go on bottom here. Cinderin might be in some trouble. Nice, really quick Hex, though. Bulldog going to town with the bear. Here comes the finger. Manta style to try to get out. He's going to get four staffed away from Dendi. The Radiance burn still hitting him, though. Mask of Madness might actually end up killing him here. So low. Oh, yeah, he's dead. No buyback either. And that's a big pickoff, but... Here come the rest of the Radiant. They want to try to make this worth it. They have to at least delay the push a little while longer before they try to go high ground again, and they might lose a second set of racks. Pycat getting hit here by Wii. The Pompsy BKB is going to get mecked up by Lil. Cinderin and uh, Bambo actually Whoa. both backing off here. They turn around. They manage to get a kill on the Enigma, yeah, and the Bear MKB. is still chasing down Dendi here as we work towards the base. Pignum with the swap actually stuns the Bear to get the kill. Nicely done. No Bear on cooldown here for another 45 seconds. Bignum wants to try to go for a TP. Should be able to get out. Ooh, just barely. Pycat only able to get one auto attack in there for the TP. Yeah, Pycat actually got an MKB hit there on the uh, Enigma. So that pretty much allowed him to an, an additional kill. But getting that kill on resolution on the Spectre, yeah, that's where it all came from. I was actually going to say that the Radiant can actually be pulled apart a little bit. You have a couple of great split pushes on the team of uh, the Dire side. You have Animal Bulldog and even Pycat with Mask of Madness. Um, and also with Sanjin Yasha can probably actually do a little bit of split, putting, uh, split pushing on his sniper or at least have a team backing him up while Admiral Bulldog push and pushes another lane. So I kind of expected them to maybe start looking to take the tier 2 tower top, but getting that kill on resolution kind of like played itself out really. No real thought needed, just like, yes, we've got a kill, let's continue. And yep. the tier 2 tower top will go down now to PyCat. So... They only have 20 seconds, though, so they need to be very careful about trying to engage into this. When Resolution revives, he will have Haunt up, and there's only one bear. And this bear is actually being taken down quite a bit. Swap into the middle lane. Bignum going to be giving up his life here for what looks to be the Night Stalker. BKB. He's trying to do a little bit of damage, but in the meantime, Rax also being Siege. Glyph is going to be popped here. More Shrapnel is being popped. One more ultimate coming off from the Viper. We trying to go in. His BKB is going to be wearing off soon. He needs to be really careful about this. Dendi with one ulti. He doesn't have mana for... Uh, anything else because he's used the refresher orb and now resolution he's finally alive chasing out the admiral bulldog there is no tp on this lone druid by the way so he's just buying items they think he's resigned to the fact that he's just going to die but oh my god we actually get sniped, sniped in the meantime yeah resolution picks up oh a triple no, kill i cat being chased down by resolution just he's, fights he's happening dead. pretty much everywhere that's an ultra kill for the specter and i'm pretty sure he does have buyback now so almost everyone on the side of radiant currently has buyback and three members of the Dyer have buyback. Would you have done something different in that fight? Like actually I wouldn't have just tried to push at all. But like, like, could you not have just like committed in, in, in terms of being able to get it? Because the Glyph was used just before the Haunt came in. Yeah. Um, and I think you actually would have been able to at least get one of the racks down. And if you actually played it really well, you could have got two. But I think the scary thing was when Resolution died, he actually bought his Refresher after he was dead. So they didn't notice that he had Refresher, and then when he came up, he had two haunts instead of one. Mm. And I think that's also what caught Pycat off guard, because the second haunt is what killed him, not the first one. But uh, Resolution... Cinderin. Yeah, he's a just going in here. That's a, a gift easy from kill. Denmark. Yeah. Well, he um, does have buyback still, so I even think that giving away that particular kill, maybe even if you only delay them a couple of seconds, because you don't want Viper to buy back with three seconds left, and you don't even want Sniper to buy out at this point. I mean, they but they might back, lose racks. They have backdoor protection, yeah. But they can afford to lose one rack. They just can't afford to lose the game in this situation. This is a 
one of the tricky things in terms of like you don't I'm I'm pretty sure they know there's a, a decent amount of buybacks on the team of the dire side but if they were able to kind of snowball in the enemy base just pick off one and then maybe get a second one that could actually almost mean game if they weren't buy back on those particular heroes but either way the scary thing is though if resolution dies again it's going to be kind of tough because his his inventory is almost full unless he gets rid of the mask of madness so he has to save buyback and i don't know He's if they're going to give him time to get refresher off cooldown actually it's only a minute and a half maybe they will have time We'll also see how long the Roshan timer is going to be in probably about 15 to 20 seconds. Hmm. And Roshan could pretty much end the game for either team at this point. I would just leave Admiral Bulldog top and just send everyone else towards Roshan now. Like, push out that lane the best you can. The bear does have Radiance, so you could just do it with the bear. You can afford losing one bear in, in this position, I think. Uh, yeah, it's about 70 seconds uh, cooldown if he wants to get another bear available. So I would just push out the wave top and just go set up for Roche. Um, but we'll see. It's a pretty tense game for both teams. You yeah. can kind of tell by the uh, lack of confidence from either side not really wanting to uh, cross the river or uh, pick up any farm in the opposing team's jungle. But a lot of that has to do with the Night Stalker as well. We are playing the Night Stalker having a gem and also that agonims at night time. So it's probably a better decision for Dyer to say super defensive. Well, you, like you said, the, the lane pushing is the most important because if you start losing lane equilibrium against Zeus and NS, your map control is gone completely. They'll deward everything. Like, we already spotted the ward on the high ground over here, so Denny's just going to drop by and kill it really quick here at the bottom rune. But the, the longer you wait and the more the lanes have the potential to be pushed out, it gets very difficult if you're playing, like, into that style of lineup. Oh, top lane. Yep. It's going to be a haunt here. They've cut out PyCat. He does have BKB. Also, Shadow Blade is going to get him away. It's, it's interesting to me that he bought Shadowblade, but if you think about it, in the late game stages, there's only going to be one person carrying detection at any given time. And Wii doesn't have bots. And he could buy them, but he just hasn't bought them yet. And that means that the Shadowblade actually gets you away from every single gank. And if you want to be able to just push out lanes for free, and you know where the Night Stalker is, that item has pretty high value in this situation. But how sad do you feel for a, uh, a sniper not having a Scardi in terms of any like significant stat gain? Even though like level 22, but just having that kind of Sans and Yasha, everything else apart from Sans and Yasha and BKB is just just items about stats. And the kind of meta these days is you get you get stats on your sniper. You want that survivability Whoa, and that damage. Did no one see him at all? That was crazy. I'm not sure. They still had a ward down. They just freshly placed it. But yeah, that was really weird. Both teams kind of just walking by each other. As far as the Scotty goes, I think he just felt he needed damage. Because if you go bots, you lose a pretty good amount of attack speed from or damage by having either phase or treads. And Scotty doesn't really make you that much of a right-click threat right now. And Spectre will just tank your damage. And between Dispersion and Radiance, you could probably take more than enough to die just from that with only a 5 second BKB. And even if you kill Resolution once, he'll still be able to refresh Haunt back into the team fight anyway. So yeah. I feel like it was pretty necessary to have a little bit of extra damage in his inventory. No. No. I mean, really, like against an AC Night Stalker with 31 armor and 3,000 health, a Scotty is not going to do anything. Like you're you're not going to kite that lineup. Yeah, not with these heroes. But you get a lot of control. Like we've seen some crazy games of a sniper just being able to sit behind the team and actually just like bait people in. But uh, we're going to see a, a Roche attempt here by the Radiant team and already looking to see who's going to pick it up. We've got some items dropped, maybe the Enigma. We should, probably might get Dendi having the cheese. Uh, we'll see if Resolution really thinks he needs an item. I'm not really sure, but it's definitely going to be going the way of the Radiant. And with zero racks down on the Dire side, they're really going to have to make this work for him. Yeah, but they have a glyph up and Aegis now, so this high ground is very difficult for Dyer. I this don't understand why Dyer didn't want to contest that and actually just push out top lane with Adam Bulldog. Well, you're still fighting into double haunt Spectre. Like, that's terrifying for support. It's like, that Dazzle has 1200 HP. He used the haunt, though, top as well. Like you. Yeah, you but it's off yeah, cooldown now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. It's like, the haunt cooldown isn't that long. I mean, it's two minutes, but when no one's really trying to pressure, two minutes isn't that long. Like, it's a couple of creep spawns, like two, maybe max, and then the the abilities off cooldown. And if you fight around Roche with that, and he gets a haunt off that stops maybe Cinderin's blink, opens up opportunities to help Cinderin. Nice mana drain timing, actually killing the illusion straight up. He might have even died to resolution had he not done that. He might die now to we yeah. Oh he's yeah, he's gonna dead. be silenced. See you later. Four staffs tries to get away. And the night stalker. Oh, Pycat's gonna die to the Oh my god, the Radiance haunt killed him. 
This is terrible. They only have one buyback, so the Dazzle and the Lion are pretty much out of it completely just by haunting two times. He pretty much soloed Pycat, and he killed two supports with Zeus Ultis. And that's the kind of power that a global strategy can give you at this stage in the game, when your supports don't have enough. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it has a lot to do with the fact that their lineup is supposed to have ended the game already. Like, Lone Druid is not a tremendously good late game hero. And when you're fighting a constant, like, 2 or 3v5, because two of your heroes just die to residual damage, it doesn't matter how good your carry is. Like, you can't win a 3v5. So I actually believe that the Radiant are the ones in control here. They're even going to spot out the bear from Bulldog. He's going to pipe it. They're just going to town, though. I think it dies here. Oh, maybe not. We. He's going to back off. He even got Veiled as well, so... Uh, yeah. But the lanes are still uh, pushing in their favor. You can see mid uh, lane, the uh, creeps are going to be uh, pushing over the river, and it's Resolution who's pushing for that tier 2 tower bottom, so... Thank God for the uh, having two racks down already. It means that the Dire team will remain in the game for a little bit longer, but you really need to come up with a solid plan. Like, either you have to just be like, we are doing... You know, a high ground defense until the Aegis is gone. You know, we don't mind if they get more farm because the heroes that we're scared of are already pretty fucking scary. Um, but then I think you can actually still do something through a glyph to just take two racks and maybe get megas. Um, in terms of life still on your Spectre, you actually don't have that anymore, but you do have a heart. So there is a possibility of if you do get megas and all the waves are pushed in, even if they wipe you, you might have enough for a buyback and defense, and then you defend with Megas once and you've won the game. So yeah. um, I, I, I feel a strategy, Andy, is in order. Yeah, they have, to, they have to have buybacks on every single one of their heroes. And they have to either find a pick and then go for a push, or just try to all in and hope that they can defend Radiance all in after getting Megas. And to be honest, I think their team actually dies before they even kill the Rax. Like, I think they're that far behind in terms of damage, especially if Dendi has both of his ults off cooldown and he has Veil. And they have double haunt as well. Like they, there's no way they win that fight in any world, even with buybacks. By the time you're already out, you can't TP back to the lane to continue pushing. So I mean, it, you've got free BKBs as well. So it's pretty much if you're going to do that strategy, it's like pop BKB, ignore everything, and go for Rex. Yeah, but it's tough still. Like even and then a you're up against a black hole as well. So yeah. Yeah, like you you can BKB, but the Enigma also has his own BKB now. So you can't mini stun him with MKB anymore either, which means if Lil finds an opportunity to hit a handful of people with it, it's just like, he's going for it. They're going to spot Pycat, scouting with the Zeus ulti. One haunt's going to be there. Doesn't look like he wants to try to commit to it just yet. Here comes Resolution. Pycat going to pop the Shadow Blade. Fucking Mad and Admiral Bulldog are off here into the side, and they're not going to choose to chase it out anymore. But the commitment of those ultis alone, like, you can tell how scared they are. They realize it's like, okay, we can't actually fight. The only way we win this game is if we get a nice pick and to somebody who doesn't have buyout, which in a 57 minute game is pretty rare, unless you've already killed them, which clearly isn't the case. Or we try to all in, and that's super risky. Well, they do have uh, one smoke available for the Dire team, um, but Cinderin is going to be wanting to finish his ags. I personally think BKB would have been a little bit better on him as well. Um, for the Lion, you mean? Uh, yeah, on Cinderin, yeah. on the Lion. And then Sexy Boy on the Dazzle. It's like it's quite sad that he hasn't been able to finish his like uh, Ghost Scepter as yeah. well, because uh, that's uh, an item that can just keep you in there just long enough to maybe help you know save a teammate, keep yourself alive, and buy some time. But if you wanna, if you're gonna fight in the enemy base and you are gonna go for that, trying to get the last two racks, it is all about buying time and just having that survivability. And both of the supports on the Dire side looking a little bit squishy, um, even though, of course, that ultimate uh, point booster and uh, overflow is quite nice on the lion, but the blink dagger kind of gets pretty nullified. Um, yeah, not, you can... not so fun versus Zeus and, uh, and the Spectre uh, with Radiance. So really tough game here for Cinderin. He's actually looking like he's done pretty well with 6, 10, and 12, but really, it's going to come up to the next Roche timer. We've got Matska on the bottom lane, just escaping the Wrath of Dendi. And... It's gold for everybody, and the only person that's really happy about this is Admiral Bulldog, because he's got 12 slots, and he's yeah. actually almost used all of them up. <laughs> uh, you could tell this itemization has been to try to just go high ground and finish, because he bought Vlad's, he bought BKB, yep. and he bought Pipe. But his bear isn't technically six-slotted, and not even really close, if we're being completely honest about like his, his item progression. Like, There's no Abyssal on the bear, there's no Mjolnir, 
He's got a Midas on it still. He's even got Tranquil Boots on the bear. So there's a lot of room for improvement for that bear's inventory. Does Mjolnir proc off Radiant Spurn, by the way? It procs off all damage sources. Yeah. Okay, then I think that's uh, a key reason why Mjolnir just came up. Yeah, I mean, Mjolnir is also just good for anything hitting it. Like, the damage output that you have is pretty insane. He's mm -hmm. gonna pop it on the bear. We's just chasing it out here. He doesn't have a basher or anything like that, so he can't really have any crowd control over it. But honestly, I I don't really know what Dyer can do outside of hoping that Radiant make a mistake. Like, that's the stage of the game they're at. They're gonna find the Viper, though. BKB popped. Reality, or excuse me, Haunt was already popped as well. He's gonna get nice swapped swap. back, and he is dead. He does have buyback. And bottom lane, PyCat was also scouted out by the Haunt of Resolution. They're going to pop TPing one top. more Zeus ulti. Yeah, PyCat is out of here. He just wants to continually push out lanes. And with that TP, I really do think that Radiant might try to go high ground just because they know that the Sniper is not going to be at this fight no matter what. Oh, blink four. They're going to catch out Dendi. We pops a BKB. He wants to go right on the Cinder and no finger is used. Dendi ends up dropping. Very nice defense so far from the Dire side. They're going to throw a Grave onto the bear. Bignum now in some trouble. Haunt coming in. Does Resolution want to actually try to commit to this fight? Looks like instead he was killing PyCat in the top lane as we will continue to retreat from this. Silence is the bear. Just going to try to walk it off and I think he will probably be fine. Even the bear can't catch a Night Stalker, man. He's, he's haste speed. Oh, they want to so continue chasing, though. Cinderin actually had four staff and didn't actually end up four staffing uh, the bear or himself uh, at the end of that fight. Can you four staff the bear? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Um, he might be dead here, yeah, though, to he resolution. Yeah, die. Oh, nope. blink. Just about gets away. Resolution yeah. probably doesn't want to stop in this situation. Uh, but PyCat definitely did the right thing. But man, that Mjolnir paid off uh, for Admiral Bulldog on that base defense. And uh, a couple of the procs actually helped secure that kill onto Dendi. But he's going to be respawning soon. Uh, Dendi still has six charges on his bloodstone. So he's definitely not going to stay dead uh, for long between the fights. And all the meanwhile, Resolution looking to take the Casually melee ranks. diving tier four towers. Yeah. And they don't even want to commit buyback to this. Like, if you buy back for your first Rax defense, it's even backdoor protected. So it's, it's healing up quite a bit here. They need another creep wave desperately. They're even going to go outside of the base to try to catch the bear again. Bulldog is like, please, leave my bear alone. That's second bear down. That's a full minute before he can even spawn another one. Mm -hmm. Cinderin is trying to be annoying here. Spamming mana drain onto resolution, so maybe he won't have mana for his ulti when it comes up. But I don't even know, like, the damage that they have, sure, they can kill resolution, maybe. But I still don't know if they're going to be able to finish the game. That's a real concern. I mean, look at how little damage he takes from that. He eats an Impale. We pops a BKB. He's still got a gem in his inventory, though. Needs to be a bit careful. We might be going down. Yeah, he's going to eat a Viper Strike, and his BKB is gone. Admiral Bulldog coming in for a couple of bear slaps here. Hallbird onto the Viper, trying to kite it out. Blink to the high ground from Cinderin with a Hex will help Bulldog secure that kill. Oh, man, crazy. Crazy for the Radiant that they weren't able, even able to capitalize off that. They, uh, the, the defense of that bear initially was so huge in terms of impact. That it just kind of slowed down and, and crippled the uh, team to do so. Uh, Wehar actually did a really good job bottom. Um, he was actually harassing the bear all the way from the river. Uh, so Admiral Bulldog couldn't uh, teleport it back. Um, so Admiral Bulldog actually ran to the bear, decided that was the better choice of options, gave it a pipe, but then it still died. So this bear will be back up now, though, as the... Roche is spawned. We've got a Shadow Blade on the Enigma. Won't be able to blink just now. Oh, buyback maybe. here. Here comes the Haunt. Lil walking in, looking for possibly a black hole. The Roshan's going to drop here. Picked up by Admiral Bulldog. First cheese. target down is going to be the Dazzle. He doesn't even get a grave off Dendi. Four staffs himself up to the high ground. It's a one for one right now. The Enigma still has buyback. Resolution going to eat the Hex. Lion. Cinder going to be dropping there. Bulldog trying to get out of the pit. Nice swap from Big Num. Bulldog. He pops the cheese. I don't think he has any team to help him though. Right now he's just trying to buy the time. Pycat though from the high ground starting to lay into Big Num a little bit. Decides that he doesn't want to commit to the fight and just backs off. That's Aegis down here. Cinderin looking like he wants to re-engage. Gets spotted out by Wii. He's going to get chased out of this fight and Bulldog is going to be killed a second time. Gem on deck. I don't know Pycat. why Pycat doesn't just like bots into base earlier. Uh, he's actually he doing going? it now. He, yeah, he's doing uh, it He now. could have done that a lot earlier instead of actually like harassing. And I think that the Admiral Bulldog would have bought him at plenty of time. There is going to be a glyph of fortification available and Pycat's going to have to run. Is there a new gem? There is not a new gem. Um, but he is dead. The Shadow Blade, five seconds. Will he live? Probably not. Nah. Definitely not. He's dead. Um, I actually think if he did that earlier, he could have probably got the Range Rex or at least forced the glyph out and got out alive. So. Yeah, forcing the glyph is big, but yeah, also to keep in mind that forcing really drawn out engagements like that against a team who doesn't have tier four towers and are down two sets of racks is also good. Yeah, because it means that their base takes damage just from the fight being a 
a long yeah. duration. And even if they win the fight, they kind of have to say to themselves, and now we go back to base. Yeah. And that's never fun. I mean, of course, if you've got that refresher, you could, if you didn't use it in the fight, you could, like, bots back, refresh <laughs> after you've cleaned up the creeps and bots back out to try and put some pressure. Um, but you, they've got some time to die now. To see what they can, uh, to see if they can at least hold another defense, which they should be able to. I mean, you got Admiral Bulldog back up. He's gonna have a bear, and Resolution is pushing. He's pretty much maxed out, as we mentioned before. He's he's got some. He can change some items. But he, he can drop really the refresher for like a butterfly or something. No, uh, no, there's an MKB on Sniper though, but yeah, but it's probably would be just be better in general. Yeah. All right. Even well, against the Viper. Manta not dodging the Viper strike there. Resolution getting hit. He doesn't have a team right now, by the way. Important to note that most of his team is halfway across the map. They are still going to get the range racks. Looks like Dyer didn't want to commit a glyph to that. We got a hex on fucking Mad's Viper. Yeah. He bought it, I think, after the Roshan fight. So. Bear now being respawned here. This is the only one for Bulldog, so he needs to try to prioritize it at least a little bit. If the bear goes down, that's a lot of damage and tankiness that is just lost. And it looks like Radiant are just going to decide to wait things out a little bit. Resolution TPing up top to clear out the wave. He has Haunt off cooldown if they want to try to take a fight, and Dendi also has his bots. Sandy, is this your type of game? It's oh, a pretty wait. exciting oh, one. Resolution just got caught by this Hex. Nice. He saw. That's insane. They actually saw the uh, the TP since it was on top of creeps, and they decided, hey, guys, let's bot in on our own creep wave and catch him off guard, which they're going to do. So Cinderin is going to get picked up by Wee, though. We ha and Bigman's going to get stunned, but they uh, should All be right, coming back to back. defend, and let's see The haunt black hole coming in from Lil. Hits on two. There's no hex up right now for fucking Mad to stop this. He pops the BKB, but just gets mauled down. Resolution going to town right now. On to Admiral Bulldog. We, though, he's picking up the double. Pycat's also down. That's three on the side of the Dire. They're going to continue to chase on the fucking Mad here. There is no escape for this Viper. And even with a really solid pick, the buyback coming in from the Spectre would just prove to be a little bit too strong. I think that could be enough. Wait, how many buybacks do we have? We have buyback on Admiral Bulldog, Pycat playing the Sniper, and that's it. We have two buybacks, but we're going to have spawns. We've already got the Dazzle up. Uh, they could actually probably they push can pretty heavily here. here. Yeah, they yeah. even if they don't want to racks, they could almost get tier fours if they wanted to. Um, the tier two tower bottom dropped, yeah, about 15 minutes ago. So, I was, Andy, I was going to ask you, is this your type of game? Yeah, I, I enjoy types of games where, like, the lineups on both teams have already kind of come to fruition. So for the Dyer, you have this kind of mid-game centric push style team where they try to go high ground with a bunch of range and a bear to tank it up. And you, we, like before we even joined the game, they had already raxed. So we knew that their lineup had had some variant of success. But now it's the ultra late game. And Spectre Zeus is kind of like really, really good in the late game just because of what we saw there. Like you pick the core, but he's just immediately back into the team fight. So I think the draft might end up securing Radiant the game just in the way that they've played it out. We're going to have to see if that's going to be the case, but it certainly looks like uh, they have the chance to finish this one. It's really up to Admiral Bulldog's bear right now to yeah. kind of slow down the push as much as possible. We do have Pycat on the Sniper coming out in 10 seconds, and of course now we see a weave from the Dazzle, but it looks like they could possibly be using two racks, and then we might look for the Radiant to control the map with that Night Stalker and then take the Roche. But they're not going to go for the second set of racks. They're actually just going to back off, and that allows the whole team to respawn. But they It's did, a good call. Yeah, they did get their one ranks. Do you not think they could have done a, a more in that situation? What, did, what were they missing? They were missing Haunt. The, okay. Well, they were they were missing Haunt, and Resolution had already used his buyback. So that's seven minutes on cooldown, the second yep. you buy back. That means if Resolution dies, it's very easy for the enemy team to just go into your base as five, because they have multiple pairs of bots on their cores, and they can just go in and base you. And, and without... The um, without the help of the Spectre, he does a tremendous amount of damage in these fights. Like he is the go-to carry right now. Well, it looks like we could see an engagement here. It is very inopportune for Dyer to fight into this. They have no vision at all. Night Stalker ulti is popped. That means 675 AOE vision, and you can tell that Dyer is scared. They're like, okay, we can't see anything. His Taking this engagement is, yep. is really, really tough for us right now. Resolution has this haunt up. They want to try to go for this. BKB is popped. Haunt comes in. They're going to find Wii. The finger is popped in the back. Wow, that Dazzle exploded. They will be able to take down Wii in the meantime. Lil standing up high ground. No black hole for about 30 seconds. Gets hexed. Actually gets taken down. That's two with no buyback There's no on the buy side of Radiant. On anybody apart from Dendi and also Pycat on the sniper available. Dendi on the Zeus. And he's going to be trying to TP out here. We are going to get one swipe coming in from the bear, but didn't get the bash with the Abyssal. So... Dendi will live and uh, will look to push out some of the waves of his teammates. But yeah, Resolution didn't go down. Dendi didn't go down. But Weha actually dropped at the same time 
as the Dazzle. So nice coordination despite having to play up against, in you know, a, a team with just better vision, really. Yeah. You know, like, I'm surprised that they didn't make more of that happen. Now we can see the Dyer looking to push in this top wave. I think they were a bit overeager, not waiting for Black Hole. Resolution having Haunt is one thing, but if Lil had Black Hole when he got caught on the high ground, he would have had like a three-man Black Hole. Like just straight up BKB, Black Hole, they might have even just won the fight just based on that. Because Bambo died before Weeha even died, just due to how tanky he is. But oh God, the Glyph is available. The bear hits so hard. You got a Glyph if you don't want to get Mega. Hex comes into Resolution. That's, I think they just Mega anyway. I think this is Mega's. And then it's run. Yeah, we'll see if the Radiant can manage to turn this around. Haunt comes run. in. They're just going to go straight for the bear. Dendi pops one ultimate, swap onto the Viper. They're going to try to take him out. After this, they need to try to go for an all-in. It's the only way they'll be able to do anything. We, with his BKB activated, takes down Cinderin. Pie Bulldog, Cat. he is running out of here. Pycat trying to be the rat that he's always wanted to be. And he did buy he that Scotty, lines, by dude. the way. It's fine. Sorry, yeah. he did what? He did buy Scotty. Nah, he know. sold his Mask of Madness and went for the Scotty. I sent him a PM. Yeah. I was Standard. like, dude, this is Face It Pro League. What the fuck are you doing? 10,000. 10,000 like, euros. Sorry, James. And I was like, fix it. Um, but it's enough. And, and even like, because he's got, even with that Scardi, if he um, takes an engagement in base, he can actually slow down the enemy team if there's no like haunt. Kind of almost by himself in many ways. I mean, of course, you've got the Venge Swap and you've got the Enigma Black Hole, but you're going to have to commit like one of those to get a kill on him. Um, so with that Scardi... Oh, this, this could range, be a huge, huge pick if Pycat dies here. He does have BKB. Lil comes in with the Dust, but Pycat has no way of getting out of this one. If they can force the buyback, it might actually give them an opportunity to straight up end the game. They're going to need double Haunt to do it, but Black Hole is available. So the way they have to all in is they force Pycat to buy out, they win a team fight at the enemy base, and they could potentially thrown before they actually lose to creeps. But that's like the only way. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's the strat. I'm down. If I was in your team, I'd uh, I'd agree just to sound smart. Well, they, I'm not doing that here. I actually. The agree thing is that the reason that pick is so important is because if Pi Cat was alive, sitting in base, yeah, and yeah, had yeah, buyback, he could actually probably defend. It was like there's no way yeah. you would be able to fight that you, into you, high ground. You, you can't break him. You know, you yeah. can get you can get racks, but you're not going to get tier fours, and then you you've lost the game. So getting that pick outside the base is yeah, it's huge. Um, but Pi Cat wanted a little bit of gold, but again, it's it's taking him a while just to get to the dire base here uh, yeah. for the team with Dendi Resolution in it, and. Uh, mm. And then you've also got to have a weave on you as well. And Cinder and an Admiral Bulldog are actually looking for a gank here. They, they're going to get complete vision on pretty much everybody just because they have to push into creep waves. Uh, That's Dendi, the job. Nice. And Dendi's actually going to be looking to TP out. He's going to TP top. And now Cinder and, and Admiral Bulldog are going to have to turn around. They do both have bots. And they're going to get back to base. But they are losing their top lane of ranks. And we might be seeing potentially Megas versus Megas uh, a little bit later Indeed. if the Resolution. team of Radiant are actually able to yeah, control They the want map. Bulldog. They found the rat. The leader of the rats, I should say. Yeah. He has another bear available if he wants to resummon. That's fine. He actually just lets it die, but I think it's okay. He's got they do end up well, losing yeah. both their top racks, though. We, BKB popped here. We'll be able to teleport to safety. That's and not too bad, though. Like, buying time with Megas is, is good. I actually think yep. Admiral Bulldog uh, split pushing there is kind of what you needed. You still don't want to take those big engagements. Um, and yeah, we still only have the, oh, we actually have buyback now up on Spectre. Uh, yeah. that just, and he's going to have the gold for it too. This so. is the, the big all in. Like they, I think ideally they wait for resolution to have his haunt off cooldown just normally. And then they also have another courier with the refresher on it, which he just bought. And he'll be able to send it out to himself to be able to just go for the, the double haunt and try to take one fight with everything off cooldown because they're actually keeping the lanes pushed out pretty far. Cinderin getting caught here. Lil has a BKB popped. Bear thinking about committing to this. They are probably going to lose the Lion, but in the process, they're going to lose the Viper as well. I'm not sure if that's a trade you want to make if you're nope. dire right now. There's no buyback on him either. Cinderin, he gets graved. He's burning. He also, I do not believe, has buyback. He just doesn't have the money for it right now. He's going to be dropping Bambo trying to save his teammates. It's the one by one. Dendi, he picks up the double. They need somebody to be able to rat these waves. They immediately TP back to middle and top to make sure that they're being pushed out. And PyCat, realizing that he is probably going to be focused here, also retreats. So that's a full minute with three heroes down. That gives you plenty of time to push out the waves. That gives you time for Resolution's haunt to be off cooldown with his buyback. So that means you haunt once. If you die, you just buy back into the fight. You have your refresher there. You pop it. You swap back in for your butterfly. And then you haunt again. Yeah.
Yeah, I, I still don't think they're going to be able to win the game in this situation, but pushing the waves is huge just to be able to control the map, get the Roshan, and then have a chance at winning. So off those kills alone, they've just basically gained themselves a, you know, that one last fight advantage. Yeah, they're giving themselves um, time, but that's yeah. what they need. Like, they need to be able to take a team fight in the perfect scenario. Yeah, with all waves pushed oh, out with Dendi. Dendi. He's gonna get. Oh, yeah, yep, he's gonna suicides. Get himself. He spawns really fast though. He's got quite a bit of bloodstone charges, so he doesn't even need to spend his buyback Space here. Space created. Yeah, they're even going to give the Aegis to and the Cheese actually to the Venge. So Bignum living large here as a support player. No one else has room, I don't think. Yeah, but th this is all just setting up for the one big all-in, like trying to end the game that way. If they had tier fours, I would actually say that there is a decent chance that they could potentially turn this game and win. Mm -hmm. But without yeah. tier fours, it's really tough. Because with your throne being exposed, it just takes damage every single time a wave isn't pushed in. And then eventually it might be too low, and then somebody can just bot into your base and kill it, even if you're trying to throne them. And you have so much more of the base left to kill, as the tier 4s right now on Dire aren't even touched yet. So you got a, you got a lot of work ahead of you. Radiant looking for perfect conditions. I mean, it's possible. It's it's very it's hard, but it's possible. Insanely tough. Because you've, you've, even though um, the Dire side have kind of been keeping that, like they've actually been throwing their lives away to stop those conditions from happening. You know, you've yeah. seen Admiral Bulldog, you've seen Pie Cat both push out the waves and they, they die. And, you know, you'd be like, yeah, that kind of, you know, these guys suck, right? Because that's what I say too. But um, they're actually getting something done, even with their deaths. They're forcing TPs back. They're slowing down the push. And they've got Megas. I, I can't... I, I, we talked about the Radiant a lot. I just see it very hard for the Dire team to, to die. And we're actually going to have an initiation. Madsker going to open up with a Hex. Then a stun followed by Cinderin. And that will be a dead Dendi. And now his respawn time isn't so low. He's only got eight charges on that Bloodstone. Uh, does have buyback available. Oh, but this could be a really nice turnaround here. Resolution, he pops the Haunt to escape. And also goes under the support. So the Dire, poor Bambo, just explodes before he's able to do much of anything. Nice swap from Bignum. They manage to catch Cinderin as well. Middle and top lane, though, pushed out pretty far in favor of the Dire side. And right now, they are just not able to do anything to rebuttal. Like, the, the pushing is really what's the problem. Their team is pretty crap at clearing waves. Like, they need another hero who actually has wave clear. Like, hell, even by a Battle Fury or something, just to be able to push out faster on maybe, like, the Night Stalker, for example. I just want to point out, Andy, if I miss anything, we just, uh, just talk over me because I don't have sound, so I can't even hear the horn. Yeah, Weeha, though, he's getting caught out here. Bots into the bear. The black hole comes out. Maybe just to try to save We Is it going to be enough? Pycat getting a little bit low here, but the damage just isn't enough from the side of the Radiant. They will be able to kill him with just Matha Illusions, though. He comes back in with the Refresher, the plays. This is actually really bad for Dire. They have two people down who can't buy back. It's 15 seconds left on the Dazzle. Bulldog can buy back if he wants to, but does he have another bear? Yeah, he does. Okay, so he can make another bear. I don't think they're going to be able to go high ground still. That is absolutely painful. They lose Wii. They recover the gem, though, which is okay. Like, having vision at this stage is... It, it's not actually as important because the waves are constantly being pushed, and you know where everybody is because you have to defend against Megas. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, we always have to be pushing out waves, and that's why it's also a bit easier to gank because it's very... Simple. You'd like telegraph. Okay, well they're going to be pushing out this lane because their base is going to die. Yeah. Would you say the radiant actually have enough damage to backdoor, backdoor like tier threes and stuff? They surely do, right? With the spectre. Yeah, the spectre but they there. need everyone, I think. Yeah. Well, they I, only have do, one. Do you ever consider like doing stuff like actually um, picking up Helm of the Dominator, running a creep somewhere top? So even if the waves, you've controlled them to halfway, you can actually just jump that and just go straight for backdooring. You could do it. Resolution yeah, is going to get. A catch on to yeah. Masker here, and he's going to drop. And Masker's trying to be looking for these ki kill pickoffs with his teammates when he's uh, opening up with uh, Sheep, because you can still kill Resolution uh, when he is Sheep uh, pretty fast, especially with the backup from Cinderin on that line. But isn't going to happen, and uh, not really going to slow anyone down. It's just the Enigma that took some damage, and I think he's uh, he's just going to sit out and regen it as he follows Resolution up the waves. So it's still a tough situation, even though if the Radiant are actually getting the kills. I, I actually think like a Helm of the Dominator on the Radiant side, they can secure team fights pretty easily when there's actually a proper team fight to take. It's yeah. just about when you get to uh, when you get to bombard, and there has only been a buyback available on Admiral Bulldog for the last like ten, you know, twenty minutes, and they don't get a huge amount of farm when you've got Megas, and uh, you know your your waves are constantly pushing. And it's very scary to to get some farm if you want to push out. So in terms of um, the gold graph, I mean, it's 
constantly going in terms of the radiant favor. Yeah, I mean, you kind of mentioned it earlier too when they were talk when you were talking about like just suiciding to keep the lanes pushed out. Like that is an effective strategy at this point, just because you can never really go end. And their problem that they're running into is they have two heroes who deal okay base damage in the Night Stalker and a Spectre, mm, yeah. but mm. nobody else hits buildings. Like everybody else is a terrible building. Hitter. Necro books hit buildings. Yeah, you, you could go for like the Necro Dominator and try to go for some like crazy bot in and try to backdoor strategy. But it's also very risky when you don't have anything left in your base except for a couple of huts and you're thrown. But like Resolution, for example, I mean, he's got a second carrier. He could get a Necro book uh, just to actually have the option of, you know, doing stuff like that with his team, you know, because like if he if he if he's, he if he's the only one after a fight in terms of like if they win a fight and he's the only one that can actually push, they can send people back and then you can just bot on the necro creeps, right? Yeah, you can. So, you know, it, it's not that. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's in this situation. Everyone kind of feels like they have to play it the standard way looking for an, a, a mistake from the enemy. But sometimes to force a mistake, you really need to go for an extreme play and, and catch off guard and Matska well, we're fucking mad actually we're trying to look for a pick again it's just going to back off with the BKB we've got resolution haunting in and animal bulldogs bear is uh, going to be hard they're very and close to the base right now Matska losing this fight is really is bad go down yeah Lil didn't want to try to commit his black hole for that kill resolution with the godlike the lanes are pushed out enough there only needs to be one lane going into the base of dire to be able to deal damage to buildings so if they want to try to go for a counter mega, they can do that because there's still quite a bit of time that they have in that bottom lane before it gets to the base. This could be one of the only opportunities they have to really deal base damage. I and I think, think they need to the take it. Mega. Yeah, they, they, they need the to. Force, yeah. They absolutely need to counter mega because that pretty much wins them the game. If you don't have to worry about the wave equilibrium anymore, you've won with their lineup. It's just so much better at fighting. Resolution, he's going to TP back here. We, though, getting caught out. He will get picked. Nice swap from Big Num. Saves Wii for the time being. He's going to pop the Ghost Scepter. And E-Blade from Dendi as well, just to make sure the bear can't hit him. The stun is there. The Abyssal Blade from the bear. He's going for a TP, but a first hit root will make sure that uh, he goes down. Yeah, Bulldog wasn't really too concerned about sending his bear, and he has a, another one available if it was to die. So yeah. uh, certainly just yeah, good to send the aggressive. That was his only bear, and they could have turned it. That could have been really painful, because even if Admiral Bulldog had his uh, buyback, which he doesn't have right now, he has the gold for it. Uh, he just bought uh, an MKB. Yeah, that could have uh, really hurt him. But again, an opportunity didn't happen. We are going to have Roshan pretty soon. And map control still is actually surprisingly in the Radiant's favor. Yeah, I mean, it took too much time for Dire to really get into a position to do anything. And when that happens, if you just have people idly pushing out waves on Radiant, it, it just, they didn't do something quick enough. And that ended up being a really scary situation for them because that Viper has not had buyback for ages. Like every time he dies, he's dead for 90 seconds. He just respawned right now. So with that being said, it's still pretty darn possible for them to lose this game. Because if you look at the positioning right now, that top wave is still not nearly pushed out enough. Like, there is probably two more creep waves that that has to go through before you can really start dealing more base damage, and you have to kill huts as well. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like a small thing, but when you're trying to go for a base race or counter mega, having anything that eats up creep damage is a benefit to you before, like, you have to go back and defend your throne. So if they can just keep resolution up here, and they just have his haunt off cooldown, he's got his refresher, this is a really good opportunity as well, because they have two lanes that are nowhere near their base, and Resolution is p counter pushing top, and he can be at the fight at any time. They're actually doing the same tactic as before. They're going to TP in on a couple of their heroes, and it's yeah. Magica with the Shadow Blade looking to catch Resolution, but he's maybe not going to fall for it this time. He's just actually sent out two Manta Illusions, but they will know. Of course, they're Illusions, and they are going to find Resolution now yeah. to see what Magica can do. In comes the sheep, and there are going to be TP of rotation, so this could potentially just backfire once again. No, he goes. Resolution he actually just gets. Wait, what? He, he just haunted. He haunted to he himself instead of the enemies. No, in he, the I think he base. tried to click onto the mini map, but he actually panicked yeah. and just ended up clicking where the team fight was instead of just going into base top. But he does have a refresher and he does have buyout, so Bulldog getting caught out here teleports back from the radiant side. They will be able to catch him once. Dazzle's down for a minute. Bulldog still has his buyback. Pycat will be able to escape for the time being. If you're Pycat, I would just head into the Roche pit and at least check if it's up or do something with uh, the opportunity of the waves now actually being all pushed out. Even the bottom wave 
should be heavily going in favor soon of the dire side and it's going to be very hard for the radium to get over there uh, dendy having to clean up the creeps middle as you can see so yeah dire high cat head into that roche even if it's not going to be overly useful for some you know for you as a sniper i actually think it actually is pretty useful as a sniper just drop bots that's all i'm saying bro <laughs> i don't know if dropping just, bots is just the play. run down with no boots he still gets service yeah, but at this stage, like, having bots is the only reason they're able to even make kills yeah, like yeah, that yeah, happen yeah, on Resolution. Is. But take the Roche at least. Like, get get something for this. You know, you got a spot. you got uh, some room on Cinderin. You've got the Dazzle coming back up. Mashka. He's got that Yasha that he hasn't turned into anything for a really long time. But you've got the wave advantage to take Roche, so you're going to take it. But, hey, I wouldn't be surprised, man. I, I, I drop boots sometimes. The sniper but actually... I, I, would, I wouldn't drop boots. He does, like, no damage. I mean, look at that. That That yeah. is just not really that threatening of a sniper. And that's why I also say that if they counter Mega, then the game is over. There will be literally no way for Dyer to win anymore. You can do a shit ton of damage soon, though. Like, I actually think... Uh, I don't know. You can't really... Mm. The problem is he needs the Shadow Blade to be able to keep yeah, the lanes yeah, pushed yeah, out. Yeah. So he can't get rid of that item. He can get rid of SNY, but then he gets run down easier. So he needs to have an item that does a ton of damage. That also... Like, he, he'll have to position what about, better. Um, getting rid of your BKB for a Satanic and getting rid of your Shadow Blade for a da Daedalus. Because it's like the only reason you got your BKB right now is, you know, it's not the Black Hole. It's not the Radiance Burn. It, it's more like the Zeus. Yeah, I mean, you're saying, like, you can live through the burst you by can just probably attacking live, people. Yeah, you can probably live through with a Satanic or with yeah. the stats you've got and also with a Daedalus. I mean, does he actually... Yeah, and with the Satanic and Daedalus, you should actually potentially survive if you're not just put in a black hole I, yeah I mean, and you also have grave as well yep. assuming bambo doesn't instantly die and then if you've got weave either up on yourself or on your opponents you know you, you, you're getting some big uh, life steals there so there is still room for this uh pie cat sniper to improve obviously you know we don't really look at shadow blade as a end game item but the poor little dwarf is so much to do yeah i mean uh, so the thing that creeps to shoot he sells the SMY, he gets like 2,050 gold back, so he could probably just sell that, keep the Shadow Blade for now, and even just go for a straight up damage item, because he doesn't have lifesteal anyway. So if he just goes damage and they take a good fight, it should be enough, I think, to, to warrant hmm. ending the game. But still, Radiant holding on strong here. Resolution has amassed 16,000 gold, by the way. He just kind of chilling on it. Just hmm. gonna. Okay, this is what you do with PyCat, right? You buy a satanic and just fly it behind, and then you BKB, and then swap your BKB out. Oh, we the we Blink did. Abyssal Bear, he is a goner. Buyback is available, Blink otherwise it's 100 it. seconds on cooldown. Yeah, Bulldog's had that for quite a while. Nice initiation there. The Zeus ulti actually came in, in time to be able to scout it, but he just didn't react. Mm -hmm. Resolution going to be pushing out the bottom wave, but he's going to have to uh, get back into the fight pretty soon. But of course, he can just haunt, he can move his uh, creeps up there. They've actually lost Madska, and he doesn't have the ability to refresh and bots in. So, this push top is only going to be a four man with two very squishy supports against the haunt. So, I suggest they get the fuck out of here and, uh, and see if they can just push out the wave again in their advantage a little bit later. Another thing I like to do, Andy, in this situation. What's that? I like to surround the throne in like a star position. Okay. I call it the star. I'm ready. No, that's what oh, you, you do. You, you literally just, I can't draw, I don't think. You literally just make a star formation around the throne. Oh, okay. I see. And then you I hit see. it. All right. Well, here comes the blink bear you once again. They're going to find out Dendi here. Swap from Big Num. Teleport coming in for Magica. The assassinate's Andy there. Dropbox. Dendi's still on fighting shape. Venge, the first one to drop. Finger and one auto attack from Sniper will get that kill. The Hex coming in from the Viper as well. Three seconds left on the Viper Strike. Pops the BKB. He wants to go all in here. Force staff to the low ground from Dendi. Eats one more Viper Strike. Resolution yep. walking back to base. He needs his refresher. He does not have haunts. This Weep. is where the star He's going to buy back. Starts, Andy. Yeah, the Abyssal Blade onto the bear. Midnight Pulse is on there as well. Admiral Bulldog getting chunked down here. Black Hole in the background. Stopping Pycat from dealing damage to the throne. They still have not yet used their Glyph. Bulldog, he's just kiting around. He wants to get damage on this base. The silence coming out from Weeha, trying to stop the damage from the bear coming out. It gets e bladed by Dendi. Around. The stun. Cinder wants to auto attack him down. There's two gems on deck. Bulldog's dead. Pycat, he pops the BKB. He's not even going to get it. He's not even going to get it. We, in the meantime, picks up a double. He takes out Cinder in the back. There are two buybacks on Dyer right now. I mean, Bambo really... manages to escape. Ho, ho, ha.
ha ha indeed. Yeah, they really fucked up the star formation. I don't know what was going on. Admiral Bulldog was doing the circle. I don't know, man. The rope or dope. They failed their geometry class. I can High tell you that much. was doing the, the backseat gamer formation and then just got killed. And I don't know what yeah. anyone else is doing. But uh, the star formation is where it's at. The coordination from tested. that fight was actually really nice. Because Lil stopped PyCat from dealing any mm -hmm. damage to the yep. throne. Solo black hole. Yeah, and then Weeha silenced the bear, and it was nighttime, so it had a huge miss rate for a very, like eight seconds, I think it is, or something like that. Yeah. And that doesn't, like, MKB doesn't work on buildings, so there was a miss chance on that on top of everything else, and yeah, Radiant Defend. All right. Almost going into 90 minutes. <laughs> Pambo, as, is, as Pambo is not pleased. <laughs> I'm so hyped right now. Don't worry. It was only appropriate that we were 90 minutes late, that we had a 90 minute long game. Yeah, I'm okay with it. This is actually interesting to see how teams you know, coordinate without without really what they they consider like their team. You know, this is uh, this is basically yeah. pro league. They're mixed. Oh, uh, in terms they of want uh, players Magica. from different teams. Nice hex and TP. Nice. And uh, Magic is gonna get out. Yeah, so it's it's nice to see how they can coordinate. I, I think that uh, generally pro teams that play together more would probably pull off uh, a win. And maybe in some of these earlier situations for the Radiant and the Dire. Um, but overall, uh, a nice amount of skill displayed by both teams. And Resolution, going to get weaved up. Just going to be like, I want to hit your base. Okay, here we go. Cinder and he's going to get hexed. Dendi just getting chunked down by Matsuka right now. Milnir pop finger with the E Blade on. Dendi going to go down here. He has buyback and Resolution bots available. Lil, he has no BKB. The tier 3 does drop. Swap from Bignum to try to save Resolution. Not successful though. Resolution buys back into the game right now. Auto attacks here onto Wii from Matsuka. Here comes the second oh. haunt. They want to try to do something here. Everyone on the side of Dire is quite low. Are they going to be able to get anyone? Pycat finds someone outside of the base. There's another finger to secure that kill. And it doesn't look like Resolution decided to go no. to that haunt. He just said, nah, we're not, we're not fighting that. No black hole. Yeah, and actually, um, uh, Cinderin oh, took down. Did he have refresher the whole time? Mm, no, he um, Did he, he get died, it, like, after? Refreshed and then came back. No, 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 I'm talking about the Enigma. Oh, sorry. He didn't die. He oh, didn't refresh. Oh, the casual Shadow Blade pass each other, but I Lil has a gem. First time he's Lil has a gem. Can they actually do anything about this, though? Dendi's still dead for another five seconds. They managed to catch out Wii in the side. Does this man have buyback? He does not. Three and a half minutes. He's looking for Cinderin right now. Ho, ho, ha, ha. Onto resolution. No buyback on him either. Bulldog getting caught. The mantis Pycat, popped. Get no this fucks. lone druid is getting owned. Pycat. He's a ninja. He wants the throne. He's going to get black hole. There's a refresher on Lil. He can't kill it in time. Oh, my God. The heartbreak. Now, granted, they have buybacks. Yeah. so And he really this. fucked up the throne's paint job there. So... They might Dude. actually still lose here. <clears throat> yep, here's one buyback. Are we going to see a bot? Dendi, he's getting focused here. Double hex, one onto Dendi, one onto fucking Mad. Resolution comes back in. He wants to go for the Viper here. Four staff to the low ground once again from Dendi. Cinderin, he gets e-bladed up. Dendi's still alive for the time being. He's got Refresher. He zaps him once. He might be able to walk this off. The creeps, though, they're pushing into the huts. Lil has to go back. He needs to defend the base. Here come the rats. Shadow Blades in mass. Lil scouting it out once again. With his own gem and shadow blade, he's going to be able to catch out the Viper. There's no BKB. Pycat, he's looking to peep the throne. Is he going to be able to get it? 100 HP, and it dies. G, G. What a game. Star formation. They I mean, that dude, that wasn't a star formation. That was like a Picasso. It was just everywhere. No one even really knows yeah. if it's art or not. People just say it's good. Yeah. I, I felt they could have put that pressure down a lot earlier, though, the Dire, in terms yeah, of like, lose, like, lose team fights, at least in the base, that take a long time with creeps, rather than lose team fights because you've taken five on five engagements and you're having to throw heroes down one by one to kind of keep the, the lane equilibrium um, going the way it was. Uh, welcome back to the amazing studio with amazing casters like mm. Andy. Uh, not so much me. Um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go into another game. We're gonna see this yep. is uh, who's gonna be queuing. Um, so far, we got Wii, Screen, Big Num, RMN, Goddamn, and Pablo. I don't know who Pablo is actually. There are some people in the FPL who aren't like on a team at the moment, but who have played professionally before. And there's actually a, a good thing with it though, because there's a lot of people playing in the FPL um, that are actually like 
uh, this person's really good because they don't normally get to play with each other, right? Because you, yeah, yeah. you don't join parties with each other in ranked matchmaking. You know, you, you don't necessarily scrim with with uh, with them on your team, and then you actually get to play with each other, and you can really tell how good someone is just by like their communications and all that other stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get out of this game. Um, I don't know what uh, Scriff wants. I don't know he what wants Scriff. He's you're slapping your hand. I don't. The time. time. The clock. Oh, the clocks. Oh yeah, our overlay. Oh, Fix no. the overlay. Do I have to like push the button? Press it. There you go. Twenty-two. Brilliant. In Sweden. Thank you, Scriff. Excellent producing there. With our new overlay.